Hi Fraser Christian from the Coastal Survival School. Just going to do a video today on making a gill net. I've got all the components here from the commercial net makers. I often get asked a lot of questions on what is a gill net, what's the difference between a piece of net and a gill net. This is actually a machine made net, um, probably about just over three fingers wide the mesh, about 30 centimetres or corner to corner from each knot, about 30 centimetres. Uh, a gill net is not actually just a piece of net. What a gill net is, is a length of net that we take and we bring it in to half its distance. So we start off with a metre of net. We're going to gather that metre of net into half a metre and what that's going to do is that's going to create a nice baggy, loose area of net and it's going to be sectional all the way along the net. We're going to have these bags of net. Because what's, what the common conception is that a fish is actually going to swim straight in and get caught both gills and his head's going to go through. That only happens if you panic the fish into the net or they're swimming it, you know, they've got to be swimming at quite high speed to actually go into the net. What we want to do is create these bags so when the fish actually touches it, it's actually in a bag of the net before it realises what's happening. It touches the net there, I think, I've come up against some resistance, I want to escape from there and it'll turn. And as it turns, it's going to bag itself up in these lovely little pockets that we're going to create along the length of the net. So this is the components when we go to the net makers or we buy our components. So this is the blue polyprop rope. This is one of the first components we'll talk about. This is a braided blue polyprop rope. And why we're going to use this, it actually floats in water. This is going to be what's called the headline. And this is going to be the top of the net. And when the water's in, the tide stops running. When the tide's running through, it's going to kind of flatten the net off. But when the tide eases, it's going to lay the net just to float up really lovely to the surface, okay? You can add extra uh, floats from the top of this. Um, for what we're doing, we're going to make a small net. You can see most of this is going to fit, even if we put this now, all of this, this is quite a long net, this will fit into a carrier bag. We want to make a nice small net that's going to go into our possible pouch or our bug out bag or just to chuck in our pocket. Okay, so blue polypop rope, that's for the top, that's the floating line. Okay, next component is this stuff. It looks a little bit like paracord. It's lead line. Uh, this is what's called number two lead line and in the centre of this it's got very small ingots, little tiny nuggets of lead running all the way through it and we use this on the bottom of the net which is called the foot rope and this allows the net to sink to the bottom, okay, holds it on the bottom. Okay, so we've got our floating blue rope on the top and our lead line is going to be on the bottom. So this is called the head rope and the foot rope that's going to be. We've got some other braided line there to use for making the net in a second and this stuff which is a bit like kite string this is just a nylon braided line and this is what we're going to sew the net together with this is what we're going to gather the net up with we're going to use a sewing needle okay and we're going to load that up in a second with some line and that's what we're actually going to use to sew the net to make and create these little bags that we spoke about so a machine made net here I will do another video on actually how to make the net, just starting from a piece of cord. And what we need to do is when we buy our net, it's tied together, okay? It's been the ends of the net, every single mesh has been gathered up on some cord. Okay, it's really important that when we cut this cord, we make sure we've got it attached to another piece of line. What I've done before is cut this, not kept it together, and then you have to spend hours re-sewing this piece of line, okay? So first of all, find the centre of the net. It's normally marked with a little tag or often, I don't know if you can see there, but it's just been highlighted with some little red dye on the end there. And we just go to we find, and there we go, we find the centre of the net. So we're going to cut this cord now, and we're going to attach a new piece of cord to it, which we're going to end up running on. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll tie one end of the net off to itself. So with this, one of the loose ends, we find the first mesh on the net which is there marked red and we just tie that on to one end make sure you tie a good knot there and we just do two rain turns on that if you're paranoid do three okay and that's so we know that it's attached to that now that's not coming off so now we've got to attach this cut this side is going to be on this end of the neck and join it onto that braided cord okay Take your 
time when you do this stage, okay? This is quite important that we get this right. Cut it there. Just definitely attach to that end. Just check that. Okay. Just a simple overhand not to join this. Try not to put too much of a knot in this line because it's obviously the next one just banks over this knot. So again, just check all your knots as you go, taking your time at this stage. So there we have it, and we're going to do this to the top and the bottom eventually. Okay, so that's attached to there now, and that means we can slide this along. Okay, and we're going to tie this between two posts in a second, and I'm going to show you the second stage, which is actually how to rig the gill net. Okay. So picking up where we left off, this is where we joined the net onto our piece of cord and that just runs all the way down the length of our net. Here's our head rope and here's our lead line on the bottom there, okay? Next we want to run our net along our leading line here, we just gather a little bit off, just run it all the way along. This is the bottom of our net now, this is going to run along the lead line and we're just going to do the same as we've done to the top, we'll attach a piece of cord. We can run it all the way along the length of our net, and this just allows us to slide our net along before we stop fixing it up. Yep. So loading up the net needle, okay, with our cord, just lay it onto the needle, okay, like that. Secure it with your thumb, and this is sort of flexible so it can bend backwards and forwards, and then you just simply push down with your thumb, hook it under, round, turn it, and on again, and just compete repeat that process, okay, to the, the needles loaded right up to the top there, turn in, turn, down, press, under, cross, and so on until we've got that full right up, okay. So there's our net needle loaded right up, we can just stick the spike of that up through that net to secure it there, I'm just going to tie the end on now back on that there and all we're going to do is just do a simple running knot on the back there and once we've done it two ways we'll just take it back underneath and just do one on the bottom there just as a lock the good thing about using this polypot rope is it's kind of squashy and you just basically pull those knots onto the pinch down onto there okay and that's nice and secure now the end of the net and this is the line now that we're going to use to actually construct take this from just a simple piece of net into a gill net. As I said earlier, the theory is that we make a measurement along here, okay, and whatever, say this is this measurement here between my hands, and we're going to take twice as much net, and bring twice as much net into this area here, and this is going to make a little bag. So using our net needle as a gauge, we're going to measure across there three times, one, two, three, okay. Now this distance here, we need to measure again now, so we're going to pull the net out, not to it's stretched right out, but just so it's hanging freely between that distance there, which is a distance of three lengths of the net needle, and then we just need to count now the meshes in there, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, we'll go to twelve because we want to divide it in half, it's easier than eleven, twelve meshes, okay? So this distance here is three net needles and it's actual 12 meshes. So now we're going to take 24 meshes into this length here. So let's go through this again, okay? We're going to take 24 meshes into the distance of 12, which you've already worked out is three times length of our net needle. So one, two, three, okay? on that needle in there just to mark that spot. Now we need to count off 24 meshes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay. I don't know if I showed you when I picked up on that one. I've actually gone through the diamond there and see what I've done is I've made a mistake on there. Look. Instead of securing it to 
with a guide piece of string so the neck can freely move, I've actually ended up tying it through the diamond. Oh no, we've, we've got it right there, sorry. No, that is right. Just so that can move. So we don't actually tie through the net, we tie between the two diamonds, okay? And we simply just come up through. Okay. And then through one way. Pull it. Okay. Through again. We've got a loop on the back seam, we're just picking up the back of this loop. Have you gone through them, mate? Yeah. There you go. So it's two one way. Okay. It won't slide that way, we don't want it to slide back the other way. So we've got two that way. Now we'll chuck the loop over. We'll do one the other side. Go through like that. Through on that side. Just two rain turns with her. Oh, it's another way. Pull that tight. There we go. And this is what we were trying to create. And you can see now we've got so the net's going to be hanging like this. We've got a lovely piece of the net's called what's traveling. We've got travel. So the instead of the fish having to go through that, it's going to come up here. They're not stupid fish. It's going to touch this net and want to turn away. So as we've got this hanging lovely and loose, it's going to touch that. But as it turns, it's going to kind of hit the side of the walls, the walls of our baggy bit. There's another bit. There's the first bit. Look. And there's the second part of it. But it's going to repeat this all the way along now until we finish the net. And then I'll just finish off by showing you how to take the net down. And then the second stage, tomorrow lunchtime when the tide's out, I'm going to go down onto the reef and I'm going to show you where to set this, how to pick the location, what we're looking for, what we need to be worried about. Obviously anything can get caught in this, so we're going to check the sea conditions and hopefully if it's right tomorrow, we'll do the second part of the video on setting the net. Then we'll leave the net out overnight and then the third part of the video will hopefully, hopefully, be bringing the net back in full of fish. So we finished the net, sewn it all the way along as we said, taking 24 meshes, which was that distance, into the distance of 12 meshes, lovely big bag in it. And all we've done now is we've restricted its depth by half as well. So we measured the depth of the net, or just roughly anyway. It's not quite half, but it's just so it doesn't rise right up and become taut that way. It's still, as high as that can rise, it's still going to have some sort of bag. And that's gone all the way along the end now. And the only thing we've done is taken the end of the headline and the lead line together now. We've done a section of overhand knots there, and that's what we're secure to our anchor points. So it's off to the beach now. Go and put the net out. And next time you'll see me, we'll be on the beach setting the net.